Take a look around and, uh, and just look at the beauty that the Lord has blessed us with. So I'd like to thank uh, everyone for coming, especially those uh, visitors today. So thank you. Uh, it's great to have you here. Please stay afterwards. We're uh, having a cookout, which is going to be extremely distracting during the service as I smell coming right this way. So I told Sue I may move the microphone and do my service from over there. So, so those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Larry Crispin. Um, if you don't like the sermon, I'm Pastor John Doe. <laughs> good there, so. Um, so we're in Memorial Weekend, and it's a weekend where we we take time and remember those who have given everything for us. People they don't even know. They've made the ultimate sacrifice for us, so we would have freedom that we would have the way of life that we choose to have. That we're able to worship the way we want to worship. Many countries in this world don't have that choice. But we do here because someone who stood at that wall and said, no, you're not going to impede on someone else's rights here. And this is the weekend where we stop and we take a moment and we thank the Lord for them, we thank their families for them, and we thank them for their their great service and what they've done for us. At this time, we'd like to honor those um, from our congregation who have gone to be with the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to uh, talk about these names and mention mention these names, but. It always amazes me that, uh, especially World War II, maybe World War I too, people that gave their lives, you, you think, um, you know, at my age, I think of people 20 years old as kids, 18 years old, 19, 20, 21 years old as kids. These kids went off to war knowing that they're going to give their lives, millions of them. It just it still amazes me. But they had the fortitude to do These names are going to honor this morning Norm Dittmeyer, Richard DeFord, Julius Hallis, David Hickman, Herbert Hickman. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
as our nation pauses today to remember those in military who have given their lives for freedom that we enjoy, we pray you would have us all look to you for strength, comfort, and guidance. Be with all those who serve in our armed forces. Bless them and their families. Grant your loving protection. Let peace prevail among all nations, O God. Especially let your mercies rest upon our land. Even as we acknowledge with thanksgiving your past goodness on this country. Preserve the lives of men and women in uniform as they defend our citizenry. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, who, will, who alone gives us this peace and hope for eternity. We pray in his name. Amen. Everybody rise to call to worship. If you're able to. Can you get it out? <laughs> we come with praise for the wonderful works of God. Before we speak, God knows us completely. The Holy One knows us and sustains us, even in our moments of confusion and doubt. Who can count the thoughts of God? They are more than all the sands of the desert. Like clay in the hand of the potter, we are shaped into vessels of divine will. We, we come with praise for the wonderful works of God. Let's, uh, let's all sing Faith of Our Fathers. Gabby? Everybody got a sheet?
come together this morning, whether we're at home watching or here, outside under your beautiful creation. We give honor to our fallen military. Please rise for the scripture reading this morning. Take your table. This is a parable that God usually talks in parables. God is talking about Judah in, in, in this scripture, talking about Israel, and, and this is from the Old Testament. This is Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. This is the Lord that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does? Declares the Lord, Like clay in the hand of the potter, you are in my hand, Israel. Another scripture this morning is from Matthew 5, and this is the actually the Sermon on the Mount in chapter, chapter 5. 
uh, it was taking place near Capernaum. Uh, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. I believe that each of us has a huge potential and possibilities to be great. And I believe true greatness lies in the ability to recognize our potential rather than our limitations. Stop looking at your limitations and look towards the potential and possibilities with God through a Christian life within Christ. And the Bible tells us there are things we should do to unlock potential for the possibilities for our lives. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and live it to the fullest. Live it to the fullest. The Lord wants us to have a positive outlook on life and to live life to the fullest. And fortunately, there are people who do live a long life, but really, truly never live. You might have heard the term Debbie Downer or Sad Sam. Life is always a glass that's half full for these folks. A positive attitude gives you power over circumstances rather than your circumstances having power over your attitude. Now be careful, your positive or negative attitude is generally the first impression that we give new people that we meet. And it's what they believe about you after you've walked away. You can never have a positive attitude if you carry around a negative mind. Absolutely never. If you want to have a positive attitude or outlook on life, follow this scripture. This is from Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So we need to be open to new thoughts and ways and keep our mind open to positive things. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthened me. And another good verse to live by is Matthew 19 verse 26, with God all things are possible. How can you not have a positive attitude if you walk around with that scripture in your mind all the time? With God, all things are possible. With the Lord giving you strength, you can accomplish anything. Too many times we live this life using our own strength and our own abilities and never fully reaching our potential because we don't tap into the power of God. We don't reach out and look for God's strength and ask him what our abilities should be or what which ones we should be using. Another way that we open our potential and possibilities is to sow seeds of encouragement to others. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, Therefore, encourage anyone and build one another up. When I was a kid, I loved the story of Johnny Appleseed. And Johnny Appleseed was this missionary from Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana. And he planted trees everywhere he went. And as a result of his efforts, there are apple trees in all these states. The seeds grew into 
trees and produce apples, which produce five new seeds, and each one hundreds of apples for each tree. So if we sow encouragement in people we meet, over time, it grows into fellowship, partnership, and these everlasting relationships. If there is anything we are as Christians to do, it's to support and care for others by encouraging each other. Another thing we can do is have a strong self-worth. Psalm 139.14 says, I praise you because I am fearful and wonderfully made. The Lord puts a lot of work into each one of us. A poor self-image will weigh you down in life. If you really want to fly high in life, you have to get rid of things that weigh you down. And a bad self-image is one of those. Here's a good proverb to live by. Be strong enough to stand alone, smart enough to know when you need help, and brave enough to ask for it. That's hard for us because we want to control our circumstances. Sometimes it's hard for us to ask for help. As Christians and in the body, we're blessed. Turn to either side of you right now and you'll find someone who will help you. But we got to have the strength to ask for it. Another thing we need to do is have integrity in our lives. Proverbs 11, verse 3. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. If you live a life of integrity, your life will be blessed by God. Integrity means you do the right thing, whether someone's watching or not. Wisdom is knowing the right path to take in difficult situations, and integrity is taking that path. I strongly believe that when a person is ready to take the high road of integrity in life, he or she is destined for greatness. Warren Buffett said about <coughs> hiring people in his organization, in looking for people to hire, you look for three qualities, integrity, intelligence, and energy. However, if they don't have integrity, it doesn't matter how much intelligence or, in, in, or how energetic they are. You don't want a person working for you that doesn't have integrity. Here's what Jesus said about integrity. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond that comes out from the evil one. And Jesus is telling us to allow our speech to be honest and authentic. Another thing that unlocks our potentials and possibilities is building strong and lasting relationships. Ruth, verse, or chapter 1, verse 16, where Ruth said, Wherever I go, or wherever you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God be my God. And the story of Ruth and Naomi and her mother-in-law is priceless. <clears throat> Through the strain of, de of death of both of their husbands, they found friendship. And it was a deep friendship that turned into sisterhood and a bond that kept them together for life. And as a result, Ruth was blessed to become a part of Jesus' lineage. Life is tough. So we need a friend or ten. If you live long enough, you will realize that the best things in life are not the material possessions. They are the close friends. Good friends are like stars in the sky. You don't always see them, but you know they're there to guide you in the darkness. Helen Keller once said, I would rather walk in darkness with close friends than alone in the light. In my life, I have found that good friends will help you find the things that you've suddenly lost. Things like a smile, hope, your heart, your courage. Do your best in this life to be a good friend to others. And you will have good friends as well. 
Another thing we need to look at <clears throat> is to instill an inner and outer peace. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. You know what happens if you go on Google and you type in peacemaker? You know what the first thing that comes up is? What would you think? Guns. Guns. Colt 45, the peacemaker. Isn't it odd that we type in something about peace, the first thing that comes up is a weapon. A person has to have both inner and outer peace. And that's a good thing. However, it's not easy today. Because our world is becoming more and more violent. Not too long ago, we had a mass shooting in Indianapolis where eight people were murdered. In an 18-week period, in 2021, there were 194 victims of mass shootings. That's 10 a week. I don't know if you saw too, not too long ago, uh, in a sports newscast, in a professional baseball game at the Padres and Rockies game, a Padres fan got so upset with a Rockies fan, he hit him so hard he knocked him out. What could make you so angry that at a sporting event you would knock someone out? We as Americans need to kind of look around at our nation right now and really pray for people to receive that inner peace and show it outly. It's, it's kind of crazy what's going on in our country today. We need to have that inner peace, but we need to show it outward. Peacemakers make a difference in this world. They strive to be peaceful within their lives, but they try and show it to others. We see a lot of peacemakers who are activists, who have struggled to bring peace in during war times and division. Look at some of the peacemakers we've had in our history. Martin Luther King Jr. was a peacemaker. Mahatma Gandhi was a peacemaker. Mother Teresa was a peacemaker. Desmond Tutu was a peacemaker. These are the ones that get the most publicity that we know through history, through their example. But we have them locally. We have them within our congregations, within our communities. It's not a bad thing to have our children look to those people and say, that's what we need to be doing. One of the ways we become peacemakers is that we need to listen with our ears and hearts to Jesus. Jesus liked to call his friends together, and they were sinners. And I'm so glad that Jesus was known to be a friend of sinners. I mean, aren't all of us? Because I'm a sinner, and you are at times too. So I'm so glad that Jesus still hangs out with us, and he's with us all the time. When Jesus was on earth, his ministry served those who were sinners. They hated tax collectors, prostitutes, those folks who didn't follow the law of Moses. Jesus tended to hang out with the outcast, to the socially unacceptable. He tried to walk with the religious elite, but these folks were jealous of his message and they didn't like it. They didn't understand his message of love and forgiveness. The righteous Pharisees criticized Jesus for welcoming sinners and eating with them. We should be doing the same as Christians. Do you have an opportunity to welcome everyone into your circle of influence? Because according to God, everyone is important and worthy of God's grace. Everyone is important in God's eyes. And so it should be with us. John 3.16 says, For God gave the world, so God so loved the world that whomever believes shall have everlasting life. And then Apostle Paul said in Galatians 3, verse 28, that we are all one in Jesus Christ. 
In God's eyes, there is absolutely no difference in the love and grace of everyone. And everyone shares in that. Everyone is important and worthy of God's love and grace. It's interesting, I don't know if, um, if you're familiar with Notre Dame, if you know the name of Father Paul Doyle. Father Paul Doyle for a long time was the uh, priest for the Notre Dame football team. Uh, he was also my parents' friend, so I, I knew him, Laura and I have known him since we were children. Uh, and they made a movie about 10 years ago about Notre Dame and about uh, why Notre Dame is considered such a great place. And they interviewed Father Paul. If you ever get a chance to speak, you know, see him speak, he's, out, he, he's incredible, he's hilarious. Uh, and he's inspirational. And they asked him if he thought that God wanted Notre Dame football to win. And he said, absolutely. <laughs> and they said, that's kind of an arrogant position take. And he said, I don't think so. You know, God's my father, and I'm his son. And most fathers want their son to be happy, and I would be really happy if Notre Dame wins. <laughs> So if you ever do get a chance to see Father Paul, Paul Doyle speak, go see him speak, because he's a great guy. Um, but that's how God looks on us. God wants the best for all of us. But to get the best, we follow God's will. To serve others, to encourage others, to love others, and allow others to love us. To live in that Christian mold, in that Christian body. That's how we open up our potential. Great things happen when we serve the Lord. We receive blessings. Sometimes we don't see the blessings right away. But it comes. When you join together with other Christians, the blessings start immediately. Because you're with people that love you. Let's go out and show other people the love of the Lord. Let's open our potential and help others open theirs. That's what it's about. Encourage someone this week. That's your homework assignment. Encourage someone this week. Encourage them with the love and the grace of God. Look for people who need help and encourage them. And as important as that is, when they ask you why you're doing what you're doing, tell them. I do it because I love you and God loves you. God loves me and he's done great things for me. And that's why I'm here to help you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for those opportunities that you give us to open up our potential and our greatness. Lord, we come together this morning to worship you. We come together to thank you for those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for us. We come together to worship your Son, who gave us that ultimate sacrifice and died for our sins so that we can have eternal life with you. Lord, we, we thank you for the blessing of this morning, the beautiful day. We thank you for those who helped put this all together. Lord, we thank you especially for Sue and Tom who are cooking our food. Lord, bless us this morning. Bless all those who couldn't be with us and our family. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're able, would you please stand and we'll sing our final hymn, America the you. <laughs>
Jesus prepared it. We ask that you would bless the food that would nourish our bodies. Bless all those who are here and all of our families that could be here today. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of your son. Amen.